Hi and welcome to Commerce Snacks. In today's snacks, we will go more in depth in some of the quick wins we introduced uh, in the last uh, session. And with me today, we have uh, Jesper Peterson, who is our growth lead here at Columbus. Uh, Jesper, if we talk about growth, what, what is a growth lead? What, what does a growth lead do? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so a growth lead actually takes the responsibility of the entire customer journey. So uh, we always start in the data and then we want to do analysis to get actionable results, not only on the page, so you would do CRO and UX, uh, but you also look at uh, the traffic and how we can optimize the traffic. And as well, we have to look at the CRM part. So, uh, how are we uh, managing our current customers and what does their user data tell us about their experience. So you take this fun full funnel approach. That is uh, the basics of a growth lead on, and what we do. Mm -hmm. Cool, thank you. And if we talk about growth uh, from a customer perspective, uh, when a customer enters uh, a website, what could we as, as growth lead and, and, and marketers and e-commerce managers uh, do to optimize that journey? Yeah, well, the first thing is always to empathize with the customer. So you have to consider that you are not the customer. So the customer will typically enter your site on uh, one of the biggest landing pages. The start page is usually the biggest one. And they are not as uh, comfortable with the web page as you are because you know the web page. Uh, so they typically have uh, visited the page only a few times or even uh, they're there for the first time. So empathize with them and try to see the page as if you were uh, a customer and not yourself. Uh, it's just said and done, but it's, it's really important. Mm. And what, what kind of tips and tricks could we share with, with uh, uh, our listeners today? Yeah, so the first thing is to look at the data. Uh, do you have a B2B site? Then uh, probably you will see that you have more desktop traffic, or if you have a B2B, B2C site, then typically it's a lot more uh, mobile traffic. So if you have more mobile traffic, you have to look at your website in mobile first, and then you look at the we uh, website in desktop. So those would be the things that you look at the data and try to see how does the customer experience this site. And other things would be also, uh, are they landing on the start page as a, the biggest uh, sort of landing page? Or uh, are there other landing pages that also get a lot of traffic? So those would be the two things to look at. Mm -hmm. And on campaigns, because I guess, I guess landing pages is one thing, but companies typically run uh, ads and, and create these campaign landing pages. What do you need to think about then? Yeah, so th those principles would be the same for uh, other landing pages. So you have to take in the landing page and look at it from a customer perspective. What is the customer looking for? Uh, do you have the right call to actions? Do you have the right links and buttons above the fold? So are those visible in the sort of first screen? And where do you want to lead the customer? So those would be sort of the, 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 the general uh, tips and tricks. Other uh, nice tips and tricks would be to look at, does the site look scrollable? Are there um, other things that might confuse the users? And uh, I like it. One great tool to look at is um, Microsoft Clarity, which is actually a new uh, heat map tool from Microsoft that is free. Oh. So you can sign up on that, and then you will see a heat map on your page. So that is a great tip to also look at uh, to, to really get the customer perspective. Mm, cool. I know uh, from, from before, uh, when, when, when you do campaigns and landing pages, the traffic typically runs from from different uh, comes in from different sources. So the kind of upper funnel marketing that you do and the messaging you put out in 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 the marketing channels, mm. whatever messaging you have, the customer is interacting with that first. And mm. then if the landing page corresponds or not, mm. how how can you ensure that with with uh, with more quality in terms of I don't know how how to track that customer journey. Have you got any tips and uh, trips on that? Yes, yes, of course. So the first one would be uh, exactly as you say that uh, the, the the message corresponds from the communication in the ads uh, on the site. You call that keeping the scent. Mm -hmm. So and the other thing is that you also have to look at the traffic so you get a good. Uh, data quality and the main thing that a lot of companies forget is to do UTM tracking and UTM tracking is just basically that you tag your URLs with the proper tags so you see specifically what ad has brought in the traffic 
And the structure of that is also to, uh, you, you can sort of segment them in, on different levels. So uh, a structure of a UTM tag would be medium, which would be the type of traffic. Source would be the exact type of uh, link. So you could have two different uh, uh, referral sites that could be uh, uh, bunched together in a medium, and then those would be the source. And then you can have the specific campaign because you have different campaigns, and so you might use the same for different campaigns. And then you have the ad content, which would be the individual name of the individual ad. Mm. So it's like a family where uh, you, you have the surnames, and then you have individual names of different children. And uh, the main thing about the UTM tracking is to really remember how important it is because you can't redo it uh, after the campaign is done. And the other thing is that it's really easy to do. Mm. So you have to make sure that you do this because it makes sense and it gives you a lot of value and it is so easy to do. So, so please, please do that. That's cool. And we know that sometimes uh, companies of ours are using different uh, agencies to run uh, ads uh, in social and maybe some, some other agencies are helping out with, with uh, paid traffic and so on. Mm. So I guess this naming convention on the UTM tags should be really something that, that the, the you as, as, as uh, yeah. marketers and e-commerce managers are, are taking care of and giving away what kind of naming convention uh, these agencies should adapt. Yes, exactly. And, and you have to be mindful of um, uh, that you, you have the same uh, tags because uh, Google Analytics typically can't uh, uh, bunch uh, campaigns together. So make sure that you use the same naming conventions for everything. Mm. And uh, typically also you have, to, you have to check this from time to time because it's so uh, normal that, that uh, companies miss this. I, I have a hobby of, of checking uh, QR codes, if they have UTMs, and also if I'm in social. Uh, you, you know, you can find really big companies like Verizon in the United States. Uh, I clicked on their links and, and they forgot the, the UTM tags. And this is a company that has a revenue of billions of dollars. Mm. And they, well, they just forget about it. Mm. And you know, then the data is not corrupted, but it's just bunched together and it's so easy, it's, it's so hard to, uh, to look at the, the the campaigns on an individual level, and and uh, so so it, it's uh, it's it's quite common, uh, but it's also a very easy thing to 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 fix. Mm, cool. That's all we have time for today. Um, please reach out to to Jesper and follow him on uh, on LinkedIn if you found this this topic useful. And uh, I see you in the next uh, coming snack. Thank you. Thank Bye you. now.